Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Coming to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God. A God who is righteous. A God who is holy. A God who loves us more than we could even love ourselves. Praise God for that. Our word of encouragement today comes from Genesis 18, start at verse 20. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? And of course, we know that the answer there is, God always does right. If we were to follow this uh, passage out, uh, we know that that God says he'll save her for 50. And, and, and Abraham comes back and says, well, what about if, if there's 30 and 20 and 10? And God says, if there were 10 righteous people, uh, I'll save the city. Uh, and of course, then uh, Abraham leaves and, and God goes in to destroy this unrighteous city. Uh, and all that gets saved, uh, and because it's because of Abraham, it's Lot and his wife and his two daughters. Uh, they're told not to look back. And of course, uh, Lot, Lot's wife looks back. And we're told that she turned to a pillar of salt. And so all that really escaped then is Lot and his two daughters. Um, and, and obviously that's a heartbreaking story, uh, but it talks about the immorality that was going on during that time. Today, we live at a time where people have uh, suggested at least that the immorality here is, is the same. Um, and, and your immorality itself may be the same. The good news is there are more than 10 righteous people here. The good news is there's lots of people in our world today who are righteous, not because of their own word, but because God and his restorative power, uh, and God, through Jesus Christ, the death of the cross, has restored us to himself and allowed us to become righteous. But we're only righteous by staying in obedience to God. Lot's wife had been rescued, uh, if you will, except that she didn't stay obedient. She turned back and turned to the pillar of salt. God calls us to obedience, to move forward, to not look back at our past lives. Now, we know that our lives aren't completely new. We are made into a new creation when we become Christians, but we still have to deal with our past. Uh, it's not as if we can uh, simply walk away from all of it. Yet at the same time, God provides a way that we can become this new creature and, and start over and no longer be bound to our past. Yes, we may have to face earthly consequences for things we've done, but God does not hold our sins against us, praise God. In fact, in Psalms uh, 103, I believe it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us uh, when we come to him, when we repent, when we receive Jesus as our Savior. So today I want to encourage you, if you belong to the kingdom of God, if you've repented of your sins and given them over to God, if you're being obedient, then you're in. Then you're doing what you need to do. God's already done the, the saving work, but, but to stay in, to, 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 to be where you need to be and to find God's love and happiness and joy, we simply have to be obedient. The good news is, is that, as Paul says in the Romans, we're no longer bound to the law, but Jesus came to fulfill the law. Jesus came because the law shows us who God is. And so the law is good for us. We need to understand the law so that we understand the difference between right and wrong. Today, I may want to encourage you to simply focus on the fact that God loves you. Focus on the fact that God has restored you. Focus on the fact that even in the midst of this evil world and all the evil that's going on, God is still in control and God has a plan that saves us. Why? Because we already know the end. God will be victorious. And it may not be today, it may not be in our lifetime, but we know God has a specific time already set where he will come back, take his people to be with him, and we will be with him for all eternity. Praise God for that. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunities we have to love you and to serve you. Thank you for restoring us to yourself through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Father, thank you that there came a point in time that we recognized our need for you and chose you. And Father, we just pray now as we move forward uh, today that you would fill our hearts with your love. Father, help us to be obedient to your will and to your way. Father, may you use our lives to be a blessing to others, that they might know you. Father, thank you for all that you're about to do. Please bless those who have specific needs today. Uh, you know each one. And Father, may it bring you glory as you meet those needs. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, there you have it. God is righteous. 
God loves you. And so God has made a way to restore you to himself and to be righteous. And God will save you. Have a great day. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.